Welcome back, friends. Lost Guy here, and it's time for more Miles Edgeworth Investigations Ace Attorney. It's a combination of words. I think it's Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth. I think that's it. So this is the spin-off game, of course, and uh, the next in that line of, well, the voice LPs we're doing. So here we are with uh, two voices I remember and one I don't remember, so good luck me. Here we go! What is with that prosecutor? I can't believe how rude he was. It was unbelievable! Please maintain your professionalism, detective. I'm gonna find some real solid evidence proving Meg is innocent. You'll see, sir. But we've been kicked out of the crime scene, sir. Ch true. So then, what now? Looks like my life's fallen in, in, into yet another gigantic ditch. I think it was her boyfriend who got murdered in one of the cases. Do not despair, Miss Bird. We can overcome this as well. There are many other places and things we should be looking into anyway. Eh? Really, sir? For example, this hallway. The linchpin of this, his argument against Miss Bird is related to the Master Key. In that case, this hallway is the perfect place to look for more information. Regarding the mystery surrounding that m my door. Begin! Prosecutor's building, 12th floor, hallway. It's time to investigate. Alright, let's take a look at this bench. Bench, examine. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. A well crafted high quality sofa for visitors. The stitching is excellent. Talk about a luxury waiting area. These babies are also great for napping, you know. You would sleep even out here, detective? In a hallway? Whenever I do, I always wind up dreaming about giving testimony up on the stand. But it always ends the same way. Me getting chanced by a lawyer. Isn't that awful? Maybe I should give it a try sometime. To envision myself winning, actually. Naturally. Mm, to figure there's nothing else here besides... Oh, oh, there's something under here. Is that it? Yes, it is. The file. It's... Ah, isn't this that missing ze Zero Series file, sir? No doubt about it. The bloody letters mark it clear as day. There seem to be a few pages missing. A thief took only what was necessary and left the rest behind. So what are these Zero files about, sir? I guess they've got something worth sealing in them, huh? Not particularly. It's just a collection of court case files. However... The cases within these files are not mine. Uh, they belong to the High Prosecutor that used to occupy my current office. I have my reasons, but let's j just say I was charged with keeping them as they were. Then that means the thief must have also wanted the file for a specific reason, right? It would seem so. Only the pages related to that case from ten years ago are missing. I wonder why anyone would care so much about an old case. Alright. Bed and count as evident? Anything? Alright. Do do do. Why is there a ball here? Let's talk to Maggie. I was wondering if I may speak with you for a bit concerning this case. I've always been a big fan of the courtroom, but this. This is like a dream. A dream where I'm being cross examined by the. the Miles Edgeworth. Oh my god! Stars and rise. I can't let this chance pass me by. I must remember to ask about her, her about the master key. I should jog her memory by showing my notes to her through the present button. The victim. Have you ever met the victim before? Well, I've seen him a couple times before when I had to go to Mr. Portsman's office. Mr. Faith was always playing basketball with Mr. Portsman, sir. That sounds like fun! Just once I'd love to play with him! It sounds fun, but the only person who ever taken a shot was Mr. Portsman. All Mr. Faith ever did was pass him the ball, sir. On second thought, I don't think I'd have fit in all that well with him. Maggie. Miss Maggie Bird, correct? I take it you were an acquaintance of the detective. She was under my supervision back when she was still on the force, sir. One day she got caught up in a murder and things started going downhill, so she quit. 
But I owe a lot to Detective Goshi for introducing me to my current employer. Or so I thought until a few hours ago. Right before I was about to clock out for the night. You got caught up in this whirlwind of a case, correct? Don't worry, my whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. This is the third game with her on the bad end. She's just looking at Edgeworth like, mm, 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 mm. Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I'd been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. This is why she's with Gumshoe. And now I even managed to get be named a criminal, just when I become a security guard. That's a lot to go through in one lifetime. I know, and just when I thought I had finally found my happiness, I wind up getting you and Detective Gumshoe involved in my bad luck. You don't need to worry about me, Miss Bird. Nor do you need to worry about yourself. I will solve this case and prove your innocence. All I ask is in return is for your cooperation. Yes, sir, Mr. Edgeworth. You can count on me. I'll do all I can to help. Stars in her eyes, I see. Ask about the key. Present. So when did you discover that the master key was missing? By the time I realized it, I think it was around 1 a.m., sir. And I noticed it was back at around 2.30 a.m. It was just sitting there on the ledge where the security room's reception window is. But I'm sure that between those two times, it was not just gone, but stolen, sir. Okay. Why is such an important key stored in such an insecure place? Uh, it's not like that, sir. We always keep the key further inside the room, away from the window. Always, you say? Except for this time, correct? Well, I admit that was a bit careless. But I had my reasons. I left it out because I was sort of using it at the time. It was after I had used it uh, that I left it sitting out on the ledge. She used the master key? Well, ask her why she was using the master key, then. Use the master key. What did you mean by you used the master key? Oh, I had to use it to open the door for this prosecutor who had gotten his... who had forgotten his key. Uh... Oh! Okay, what the hell? I mean, it's my job as a security guard, right? Ah! What is it? It's Portsman, isn't it? That's right, I just remembered. The prosecutor who forgot his key... It was Mr. Portsman, sir! What? Please tell me more, Miss Bird. Quickly. Forgetful Mr. Portsman. It was around 12 a.m. Mr. Portsman had forgotten his office key, so he came down to security, sir. And that's when you loaned the master key to him? No way! It's against regulations to loan the master key out to anyone. I walked with Mr. Portsman to his office and opened the door for him personally, sir. I see. And then, what happened after that? Well, he called for me to come close up to up his office. To clo uh, well, he called for me to close up his office as he was leaving to go home. That was around 1.30 a.m., I think. So in summary, for the sake of one forgetful prosecutor, you used the master key twice tonight. All right. Talk about suspicious. I doubt you can say that you've never left your keys at home, detective. I think this calls for a thorough examination of Mr. Portsman's door. Hold up. Take a look at a basketball. Basketball. Why is there a basketball? All right, whatever. What is a basketball doing here? That's Mr. Portsman's prize position, sir. I heard he also plays soccer, dodgeball, and even tennis. And not a single one of those sports is suitable to be played in a hallway. But kickball, now that is okay. What the hell is he doing here? Looks like you're in quite the pinch, Mr. Edgeworth. To be sure, murder within the halls of the prosecutor's office is no trifling matter. Why are you here at 4 a.m.? You must find, apprehend, and punish the killer. Accordingly, post haste. Sounds like a messy case you've got on your hands. If you ever feel lost or need some advice, my door is always open. Oh gracious, I will keep your offer in mind. 
Who is this guy again? We know who he is. I just don't remember his name. Is everything all right? Yes, sir. I must know. You, if you must know, I weighed myself the morning and this morning fin finally at 154 pounds. Congratulations, but I was asking about this hallway in this room. Oh, everything's okay, sir. A word of advice. Stay focused or you may start to lose even more weight. Uh, what? Oops. What is the basketball hoop doing here? Hey, didn't this used to be just outside, next to the building a long time ago? So when and why was it moved indoors? I don't remember exactly, but I saw one of the officers drag it up here recently. Drag it? I heard it wouldn't fit in the elevator, so the poor guy had to bring it himself. All the way up to the 12th floor? Examine door. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious nook and cranny. World War 2? Oh, 12 3. Room 1203. I take it that this is Mr. Portsman's office? Yeah, you can't mistake it because of the basketball hoop, sir. Oh, that reminds me. Mr. Portsman had actually wanted room 1202 really badly. But since you're already occupying it, Mr. Edgeworth, we put him next door, sir. So why was Mr. Portsman so particular about getting room 1202? I'm not sure, but I bet it's something because of something like his birthday is December 2nd. Yep, that's gotta be it. I can't think of any other reason. I can think of at least three. But why am I even wasting time thinking about this? The door is locked tight. <laughs> I bet the old credit card trick wouldn't work here, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? Actually, I've used the credit card trick in quite a few public buildings. Government buildings. Uh, it's not hard. This is the office of a high prosecutor, detective. These doors would be pretty ineffective if the average cat burglar could get through them. <laughs> so I guess only a great cat burglar could get in. That must be who our culprit is. Might I advise you to return that conclusion to whatever pawn shop you bought it from? Uh... A minimalist yet classy door made of top quality wood. Is it mahogany? It's kind of majestic, sir. Fits in really well with the ambience of the uh, prosecutor's offices. Even Mr. Portman seems dignified, just because he works behind one of these. Nonsense. A man doesn't become more or less dignified because of where he works. Well, he still seems more dignified than Mr. Payne. That's his name. Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne? I suppose custodial work can also be dignified. Mr. Payne is not a custodian. What? I don't see if there's anything else. Hmm. It's Mr. Poison's personal basketball hoop. I can't believe he put something like this in the hallway of a prosecutor's office. But you know, it's actually pretty useful, sir. I haven't gotten lost trying to get to your office since it's been here. How long have I had the same office and yet you still manage to get lost? Guys, know that's everything. It's time to logic. Alright. Master key was stolen. 1 a.m. and 2.30. Alright, let's hook these two up. Yeah, Jinx, like, we, sh we don't need to switch cameras because it does show the ones I'm looking to connect, so. Here we go. Miss Bird, I'm afraid there's a flaw in your story. What? No way, pal. I mean, sir. You said that you locked up Mr. Portsman's office at around 1.30am, correct? However, the master key had already been stolen at that time. Wow, I think it's about you, Mr. Edgeworth. You saw that contradiction like a pro. I totally forgot all about that, but thanks to you, I remember it now. You're right, it was around that very time that I realized the master key was missing. And? Well, I'm a security guard, sir. I couldn't just admit to losing the master key, could I? So I, uh, I pretended to lock up his room, sir. Ooh! You pretended? Yeah, I used my house key. I made it look like I was locking up, sir. 
So in actuality, you... Uh, so in actuality, you never did relock the door, then. Well, I thought that maybe I could go lock it after I found the key. Come to think of it, I guess the door still hasn't been locked improperly. Oh, we're breaking in now! Alright, breaking in. Ooh, uh, okay. Time to break in, time to break in, time to break in. But the door was locked tight. Oh, what? <laughs> I bet the old critic. Oh, the door is locked. That is a contradiction. Deduce. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Yeah, the master key. I didn't mean to check it. Wow. Present. Eureka! This location contradicts this piece of evidence. Hmm? I don't see anything wrong at all, sir. Detective Goshu, you should think a little harder, sir. Although, I don't really get it myself, either. I... I see. What? No, no, I... In that case, I'll point out what's wrong once more for the two of you. It says that if I look a little harder, I'll find a contradiction slumbering here. They'll probably also flip through my organizer one more time. I... What? No, it's totally... Oh, I'm just doing... Okay, fine, fine. Deduce. Deduce with the fact that it is unlocked. There we go. That's what I did wrong. There's a contradiction here between reality and the evidence. If what Miss Bird has said is true, then why is the store locked tight? But, you know, you're right. Miss Bird, are you sure you didn't relock the store? I'm certain of it, sir. And I don't think Mr. Portsman uh, noticed it himself that I hadn't. Which means what, sir? It either means that he actually does have the key to his office, or that the door Miss Bird opened wasn't this one at all, but a completely different one. She opened a different door? But how can you prove that? There's an easy way to find out. All we need to do is... We need to examine these. Prints on the doorknob? The prints on the doorknob will tell us everything. Hey you, yeah you pal, do us a favor and see what you can lift from this, okay? Okay. So, what did you find out? There's no need for such a belligerent nostril flaying, detective. Sir, I have found only Mr. Portsman and Mr. Face prints on this doorknob. So only two people's prints were found on this... Huh? That's pretty decisive. Huh? I'm lost, sir. Thinking logically, a certain other person's prints should be on this no knob as well. Now then, whose prints should also be on this doorknob? Maggie Bird. Take that. Don't you find it odd that the prints of the person who unlocked this door are absent? You mean... Yes, the door that Miss Bird opened could not have been this one, but a different one. That's the trick? Then why was the key missing for a while becomes my question. So that she couldn't, uh, close it up and then- Oh, uh, I guess? Alright. Hmm, what have we here? Don't rest- Okay, Tch, stop saying that is worth Jesus. Okay, let's look at the basketball. Is this basketball property of Mr. Sportsman's? Yes, sir. He al he's always ready for a match. Basketball, soccer, dodgeball, tennis. It doesn't matter what sport it is, he's game. Although I think it'd be a little hard to play tennis with this ball. <laughs> that isn't the point you should be focusing on, Detective. Y you're right, sir. Now I know what I should be focusing on. Bad Mr. Portsman. Someone should teach him to clean his toys up after he's done playing. I think we've reached the end of this conversation.
What is this? Looks like a scrap of paper. I'll get it, sir. Let's see. Oh, there's something written on it. I, b I brought the three pieces of evidence by, just like we talked about on the phone. But it looks like you're out. Guess I'll catch up to you later. Buddy. Hmm. Looks like a note from the victim. Yeah, it is for Mr. Portsman. Why would that note be there? It should not be there. Portsman should have found it. He never even touched his office then. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay. Organizer. Alright, I get the note from him. Okay. Can we get the prints on this door? Alright. <sighs> Examine. I don't see any signs of forced entry. And according to the guard, no signs that the lock was picked either, sir. Meaning that the door really was opened with a key. Hmm, did you happen to ask if any prints were lifted from the doorknob? Apparently the doorknob's clean as a whistle. Wiped, they think. Whoever this thief is, they did a good job of not leaving any clues behind. Twelve o two. These four numbers on a nu number plate alone proclaim this to be my office. Whoops! Hey, these number plates slide right out, sir. They have to be able to take the plate off when a room becomes vacant, you know. Why? This room 1202 and the other one's room 1203, so why? Although, the idea that it can be so easily removed is kind of... not good. Alright. It's sturdily made, making it impossible to break in by force. It's almost majestic, sir. Wish it could be as stately as this door. Only Gumshu would praise a door as something greater than himself. Being a detective has its own rewards, and a certain virtuous value, I guess, I think. If you live up to your full potential, it's a poignant trait that anyone can admire. I see. So you're saying, sir, that me being me is the best thing I can do for everyone? Right. That long pause wasn't exactly as reassuring, sir. Hmm. You can talk to Maggie again. Nope. Oh no, present to her! I don't think that'll do anything but do it. I'm just a lowly security guard, so... I'm not sure what I should do with that other than guard it. <sighs> it's like talking to another gumshoe. No wonder they're banging. Okay. I've had to open Mr. Portman's office up for him a number of times before. I've also had the chance to see the inside of his office on a number of occasions, too. He's got shelves upon shelves of sportsman memorabilia, trophies, and awards in it. To the point where it's almost beyond gaudy, sir. But maybe I just feel that way because I'm jealous uh, since I don't have even a single one. Don't say that, Maggie. Uh, I'll make a special uh, Guard of the Month award just for you. Thanks for the trying, but I've already got a mountain of consolation prizes, sir. They're proof of just how unbelievably unlucky my life has been. Plus, getting an award from you just isn't the same as getting a real award, sir. Uh, 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 oh, my balls. Uh, let's see, pull out of that. I'm definitely missing something. The question is, what am I missing? Well, aside from that note... Anything about this? Hmm, what's this? What are you looking at, sir? Oh, hey, how about a game? But that's okay, detective. I just found the position of this hoop to be a little off. Oh, you can see the dust. It was moved. Hey, you're right, sir. I guess it shifted when someone made a seriously sweet slam dunk. The positioning of the hoop is definitely unnatural. I'd better take note of this.
There, we got the last clue. Okay. Investigation complete! Poking around in the hallway has actually paid off quite handsomely. Huh? huh? How so, sir? In a variety of different ways. I think it's time we had a little chat. With the real culprit of this case. Y you know who the killer is? Well, Miss Edgeworth. As long as my logic is sound, then, then yes. The mastermind behind this murder is none other than Mr. Portsman. What? Mr. Portsman? I knew it. That's exactly what my logic senses were telling me, too. I suspected it was him from the instant he accused Maggie of being the killer, sir. That is anything but logical. Lady and gentlemen, prepare yourselves. Come what may, it's time to knock on Truth's door. Knock a knock. Let's see here. Okay, we can do a little bit more. March 14, 5 12 a.m., High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. Mr. Portsman, I have finished processing the bloody letters, sir. Alright, let me take a gander at it. Pass it here. Why? Okay, looking good. You there. Take good care of this. Whoa! Right off the face. Well, if it isn't, Detective Gumshoe. In the lab for you, Portsman. We've got you now. Good life, your dog, Miss Edgeworth. Is this some kind of joke? It's no joke. We know, Mr. Jock Sportsman, that you are the guilty party in this case. It. You must be pretty upset getting chased out of your own room. I'd be mad too. But I guess you can stay. If you promise to stay out of my way. My way. You intend to hide your crime under the guise of a prosecutor doing his job? Hmm. I can see right through that unsightly paper thin mask you wear upon your cowl. <laughs> Who would have ever thought it would come to this? Actually, come to think of it, your mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? Hmm. The legendary prosecutor who never lost a single case for 40 long years. But there was always this incessant chatter about forged evidence with that guy. Hmm. Really teaches me that I got to stay on the lookout for false accusations, you know? Are you done trying to play mind games with me? Because they won't work. The only thing you should be using that mouth of yours for is now is explaining yourself. Although that too will only dig you a hole deeper. Either way, your game is up. Well, aren't we full of ourselves, even though you haven't yet to prove anything? Okay, boy. Testimony, Mr. Portsman, rebuttal. I have no idea what sort of harebrained idea you have in mind, but... There's a mountain of evidence that points away from me being the culprit. Besides, how may I ask, do you propose I unlock your door and got in here? Look, I feel bad doing this to you, but I've got work to do, so we're done here. Sorry, but we're not finished yet. Boy, you're stubborn. I suppose you're basing your accusations on something. I'll show you what I'm basing my accusations on, with evidence. Rebuttal battle! Press. Hold it. My accusation is a hairbrand idea, is it? You tell me. I'd say it is, after all. Oh, and what, pray tell, kind of evidence are we talking about here? Jim was my partner, so you can't say I had a motive for killing him. And? That's it? That's not even an anthill, let alone a mountain. But it's more than enough, wouldn't you agree? Might I recommend that you review what the word evidence means? It doesn't change the fact that the evidence doesn't point to me as the killer. I ain't got there. Hold it. Unfortunately, I believe I have already shown how earlier... Your speculations mean nothing, as I st still insist that uh, I could not gain access to your room. 
What should I do now? Should I raise an objection? Don't raise one yet. Just keep pressing. I need to gather a bit more information. What's wrong? Don't tell me you all you all you want to do is find fault and with my flaws flawless logic. Hold it. Hmm, I don't think so. Oh? And why is that? Because there's a flaw in your reasoning. Are you calling me a liar? So, where's your proof? The saying, evidence is everything, isn't limited to just the courtroom, you know. Hmm. You need not remind me. I'll show you all the evidence you want in time. Hold it. My accusation is a harebrained idea, is it? You tell me. I say it is, after all. The next line. Oh, we already did that one. Okay, go to the next ones. I, I, I press again. It's time for the objection. You claim to have had no way of op to open my door. However, is that really the honest answer? <laughs> Alright, I'll humor you. Go ahead, shoot. Very well then. I propose that you use this to open my door. I, I, I present the master key. I believe you were able to open my office door with the master key, no less. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on for a sec. I never laid a finger on that key, as you already know. Precisely, you were able to open my door without lifting a single finger. Well, maybe you did, but only to direct. Eh. That's right, you used your finger to direct this person to open my door with the key. Maggie! You had asked Miss Bird to open your own office door for you, yes? Yeah, I kind of forgot my key at home. Happens a bit too often for my taste, you know. But the room you had Miss Bird open at that time was not your own, was it? Eh? Uh, wh what <laughs> You have quite the imagination. But why don't we ask the girl herself whose door she opened, shall we? Um, I'm certain that it was Mr. Portsman's door, sir. I checked the number plate to make sure I was opening the right door, sir. See? Miss Bird backs, backs up my story. Yet what if you had misled her to fool her into thinking what, what you wanted? Ha! Huh. And how do you suppose I'd do that? By switching the number plates on our doors, for example. That's right! They do slide out pretty easily. Furthermore, you then used one other thing to give a very strong impression. That the door she was opening was yours, and not, in fact, mine. What was it that Mr. Portsman used to make Miss Bird think that it was his room? This! Music's pretty good! What? The basketball hoop, sir? It's quite the peculiar fixture in any hallway, let alone a hallway in this building. Which is why it left an unusually strong impression on you. It's an object perfectly suited to sit just outside the office for peculiar pers prosecutor. Yeah! That's very true, sir, because there was a basketball hoop sitting there. I thought the door was opening I was opening had to be Mr. Portsman's. There are signs that the hoop has been moved. To sit it in front of my office to be s to be sure. I I see. So that's how you throw suspicion on people. Thanks for the tip. But I think your conjecture is a little off the racetrack. Conjectures rebuttal. There you go. Now you're just spouting spouting nonsense. I had the girl open my office door. After that, I was in my room the entire time. You don't have a single reason to suspect me. So he intends to claim his innocence at the end. To the end, does he? I'm as pure and innocent as my jacket. And Miss Bird is as dirty and guilty as the jacket she wears. My jacket's not dirty. I'll have you know I was I just washed it yesterday. 
Please come down, my friend, and to show who is the one truly covered in slime here. Conjectures rebuttal. Here we go. Nonsense, you say? Yes, because I'm telling the truth here. Okay. Using the master key, of course. Sure, you have a problem with that? That is what the master key is for, right? Perhaps we should place it in an elaborate labyrinth of some sort for people like you? And what were you doing in your office? I was doing my usual training regiment. Training regiment? Were you going through your law books from start to finish? Mainly batting practice and some weights. Oh, and I jog when I get the chance. Well, you must be the buffest prosecutor we have. Von Karma was probably buffer. With the weakest legal muscles, it would seem. I was doing my usual workout, so... Alright. I think I've given you quite a few reasons, actually. But, but none of those would stand up on their own. Then what about all the evidence? Objection. Oh my god. It's all circumstantial. No judge would convict on such flimsy evidence. He seems to be trembling a little. One more little push and all I have to do is find the flaw in his testimony. Ah, okay, let's present it. Present note. That freaking thing always does. That was a lie. But what are you talking about? I was th that a lie. This is a note that the victim left for you, Mr. Portsman. A note? It was left under your door. Or did you not notice? And right here it says, But you're out. Eh. Uh, you were not in your room when the victim came to call on you. So then where were you? And what were you doing? Ah. Shall I explain it in full detail for you? You were busy snooping around in my room, the very room you had Miss Bird open for you. Th that's just nonsense! There's no evidence that I made the girl open your door for me. Oh, but I do. I have very decisive evidence. N no way! This is proof positive that you had Miss Bird open the door for you. I had your door dusted for prints. My door? Ha! Huh, what for? Come on, I bet you don't you didn't find anything. You sure are good at wasting time. You're right, I didn't find anything. And definitely not Miss Bird's fingerprints. Yeah, her prints? What what does that have to do with anything? Let's put it this way. If she really was the one who opened your door, then her prints should naturally be on the no doorknob she touched. Ah! Further, all of the prints on my office door's knob have been wiped clean off. I can only assume it was because Miss Bird's fingerprints were on it. Don't you think it's time you gave up your charade? We know you stole into my office with the intent of stealing something from me. And Detective Faith found you there out. Possibly because he heard sounds coming from a room whose occupant was on, on leave. Mr. Portsman, you killed Mr. Faith to silence him. And I had the misfortune to return when I did. You had to threaten me as you escaped. Hmm. As I said, when you had the gun to my back. No one gets away with committing murder in my office. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. And just what's so funny, pal? Well, that look of stiff uh, seriousness on the face of this officer's finest prosecutor, as he makes a huge mistake in accusing me, is, is simply too much to bear. There's just nothing else like it in the world. What? Mr. Edgeworth just explained it all, and he even backed it up. You're the murderer. Stop trying to be slippery and just admit to the crime already. 
And as I said earlier, it's all so circumstantial, so full of conjecture. You say you checked my doorknob for prints. Well, I can readily confess that I had wiped that doorknob down well. Huh? I'm a little obsessive compulsive, you see. I didn't want to touch a doorknob that had you had touched. Which is why I wiped the doorknob down as soon as I could after you opened the door. After that, it makes perfect sense that only Jim's and my, my own prints would be on there. You... you made that up just now, didn't you? Furthermore, as for the note that Jim left for me, do you know exactly when that was? For all I know, he could have left it there before I arrived at the office. Like early evening, for example. Are you saying you failed to notice a note in your hallway, in your doorway? Hey, even geniuses fail at times. I was probably too preoccupied by work-related matters, although there's no excuse. Now that's just a flat-out lie. There's no way you didn't notice a note that size. Ah, but you can't prove that, can you? Hmm... Say something, Mr. Edgeworth. Back me up here, sir. Hmm... Portsman makes a good point. I can't prove that he didn't simply overlook it. Besides, I have an airtight alibi. Airtight, you say? I only realized that I had one just... just now as we were talking. I guess it would have been better for all of us if I had told you sooner. And we'll stop there for this episode. Portsman's alibi. Alright, that's it for now. Ooh. Thought we had him. Thought we had him. Alright, we'll see where, where we go here next time. That right there is the game for now. I have fun. Hope you have fun watching. That's what's all about. Having fun. Thanks for coming by, and see you next time. <laughs>